So welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my first proper video in a while and this video is very important to me, the subject and it's very important for me to raise awareness on this subject This is my pregnancy and molar story um, I want to raise awareness of this disease and I also want to share my personal story because yeah, I want to connect with people and to, for people to know they're not alone and what they're going through and what you feel is normal or normal for the situation and like what I've gone through I've felt amaz amazing I've had amazing support through a support group I'm on and basically without that I don't think I would be very good or I would be where I am now mentally and physically and everything and I can't thank them enough so I would like to be like that support or that help to someone else who's going through this so I'll basically I'll go into some inf go into some information about molar pregnancies and I'll go into my own story of what I went through as well I'll say the facts first because it'll be a lot easier for me to say the facts than to say it after I go into my story because I'll probably get emotional and... but yeah um, I've got a little page but you can look this up as well if you go into Cancer Research U UK you can find out about molar pregnancies you'll be like why are you going on the cancer site for molar pregnancies well you'll find out in the video if you continue watching but yeah no um because the molar pregnancy is complications afterwards, you, you, you'll find out. Um, a molar pregnancy is basically when an egg is fertilised, well a partial molar, what I had, is fertilised by two sperm and it ends up with too much um, genes and it cannot develop properly. The placenta has all the genes in it and basically abnormal cells develop in there and they continue to grow and grow and grow and stop the baby getting the development it needs and it basically stops it developing they can develop to a certain amount of weeks like 20 weeks I think or more there's not much research into this that's why I want to raise awareness um, a pregnancy can seem perfectly normal until with a partial molar anyway until you lose it or the all week before and that's it there's nothing you can do about it because obviously it's a genetic genetic error and with a lot of genetic errors in children some of them like down syndrome they end up being healthy and they can live others like mol molar pregnancies only rarely can they live and survive so there's the other type, the most common, well it's still rare, it's very rare to have a molar pregnancy. It's like 1 in 600 in the UK, like, and 1 in 1,600 in the U US. But the molar pregnancy, the full molar pregnancy is basically, I think, genetic material is lost. And I think it's either an empty egg and sperm, or it can be a different thing where then abnormal cells develop and basically no baby actually starts developing obviously in people's heads and our heads a baby obviously is there obviously to us the mum this all it's always a baby no matter whether it's, it develops into a baby or not with a molar it starts to develop into a baby and it's a boy or a girl it just basically can't survive and yeah this has taken me like, a long time to talk about this like a year to even be like this to talk about it so of course there's still a baby to us we lose them there was our child me to the mum and you find out you're pregnant and obviously your stomach grows you get all the symptoms with a molar pregnancy because it's the same hormone that's produced in this because obviously it's from the placenta cells in the placenta these abnormal cells develop so it actually 
creating more hormone, which normally that's how they know during a pregnancy that is abnormal because you get a lot more symptoms like symptoms of a molar pregnancy you can, during pregnancy obviously you can have bleeding you can have abdominal swelling like your your stomach's bigger for dates I was but I think personally half and half I think half of it was to was because obviously the swelling and half was because I showed more because obviously it was my third pregnancy um, you feel a lot more sick because obviously a more hormone I was being sick at least four times a day and this was even after I lost it it was horrible um, you can have anemia you have iron, low iron if you have blood loss or it's basically if you're being sick obviously a lot you're not getting enough nutrients and that in you can end up having preeclampsia if you, if your molar pregnancy is not caught early or early-ish. Um, a rare symptom of a molar pregnancy can be an overactive thyroid, um, hyperthyroidism, which is obviously a rare thing because obviously the hormones in your body are off. Um, so a good sign, not good sign, a sign that you have a full molar is when you have a scan and your womb looks like it's full of grapes, which is the abnormal cells, which is a tumour. Tumours, basically, they they start, they start can be cancerous or they can be benign. But they, can, they normally start off being benign and then they become cancerous, which is why if you're pregnant, and even if it's a viable molar, which is normally to do with partials and twin partial molars and things to do with that, Normally, for your health, you are told to have an abortion or a termination, which is really hard for some mums. If if I was told my baby would have had a chance, I would have continued because that's what you do as a mum. I'm not saying other mums that haven't are bad mums. I'm saying they did what's best for them. I personally, you obviously don't know until you're in that situation, but yeah, obviously me not having mine. I would want the opportunity to try to fight for it. And so these pregnancies are classed, the abnormal cells are classed as tumours and they're very rare, like I say, and there's nothing you can really do to prevent them. They call this um, tropoblastic disease, which is the tropoblast cells in the placenta. And basically, yeah, so where they keep the they keep multiplying and multiplying and multiplying like a cancer, and they they can become cancerous and they can spread, and yeah, with a molar pregnancy, once it's been removed or you had a miscarriage or whatever, they do two weekly to two weekly blood tests to make sure your hormones are going down, because even though they remove most of the cells or all of the cells there can still be cells remaining or cells can grow back and then obviously it then is called persistent tropoblastic disease which can also become cancerous or is cancerous sometimes but even if you just have tropoblastic disease the persistent one after pregnancy and it comes back and your hormones continue to rise you'll then be, it'll be treated like a cancer and you have chemotherapy or in some people's cases, even a hysterectomy. Um, yeah, um, obviously the thought of having that after you lose a child, the fact you can possibly decrease your chance of having children or completely ever stop having children yourself is not a nice thought and it's scary at the time. Um, but yeah, I'll go into my personal story now. And um, December, no, October last year, I found out I was pregnant. And we went for an early scan because I was having pain. And it was too early, so they told us to come, I think it was two weeks later. And then on the screen, we saw 
our baby and he had a heartbeat and it was flickering and they was like oh your dates are even not proper proper or it doesn't look very good the heart beats slow and it's not as big as it should be and they said basically a big chance it wouldn't be fine when we come back in a week and I think at that point obviously as a mum you have an instinct and I think I knew what was happening that everyone around me was like 50 50 like there's a good chance it's fine be positive and but they didn't say it was 50 50 they said um being they said that being honest with me that there's a good chance that it won't be fine yeah mum when i left the scan room it it hit me and I broke down and my baby wasn't even gone yet but basically from that point onwards when I went for the week later I, we've, we got told there was no heartbeat and it, it it was still there but it had gone you know and it was literally like I, I shed a few tears but it was like I was numb and it was like right you have options you can have tablet or you can wait to naturally miscarry so I thought I'd, nat I'd try to well let my body try to do something right and naturally miscarry and um they said I think we'll come back a week to two weeks later if you haven't and we'll go through the options then and so I went back because obviously I hadn't this was this was basically around Christmas, I think two weeks after we found out, I think I went back and I still hadn't miscarried and this was around Christmas, it was horrendous. I was scared the whole time of Christmas that something was going to happen, that was going to ruin everyone's Christmas, that, yeah. And I just wasn't, my body wasn't doing it, but I still, I suppose I was a bit in denial because I wanted to make sure that it gone and it wasn't just a mistake so when I went back I was hoping them blow like, oh, yeah it's fine we made a mistake or this went on for five weeks five and a half weeks almost it was when I went back at the four week mark four and a half week mark they scheduled me in for a DMC because I wasn't naturally miscarrying it didn't look like I was going to gonna either and then when I went to my, for my DNC they said there was growth um, with my baby and they wasn't going to do it and I have to wait another week or ha and have another scan to see first so I had to wait another horrible week so this was all over Christmas New Year, into the New Year it was horrendous carrying your baby that you know has gone for five and a half weeks it's horrible and then yeah, they I got, they got to the point that was like you can't naturally do this. If it does, if you do naturally miscarry now, it's going to be horrendous. It's going to be painful. It's going to be traumatic. We don't advise you taking the pill because obviously it's giving you a natural miscarriage. They advised me to have the DMC because obviously that's how we got to the point of the DMC. So I decided, even though it was one thing I never ever wanted to do, that I would have the DMC. And that day, I literally just numbed myself. Because I was pregnant, as far as I'm concerned. I was still pregnant, it was still my baby. And they were taking it away from me, like... And my belly was still growing, because I, they had classed it as a missed miscarriage. So my body hadn't recognised I'd miscarried the baby, because obviously the baby was still there, it just died. And my, my stomach, or one of the hardest parts, was still continuing growing like I was pregnant and I think when I had my DMC I was technically 15 and a half weeks pregnant and yeah you know after that obviously you go home and you start 
grieving and everything and then six to seven weeks later I think after my DMC I got a phone call saying about your molar pregnancy I was like what are you on about my I didn't have a molar pregnancy I just had a miscarriage and then they was like no you had a molar and I was like but a molar's n there, there's no baby it does oh you had a partial molar or they think I had a partial molar there's definitely not a full molar but it could have been a partial could have been a twin one but they did these tests on the placenta and it had abnormal cells and they said we're gonna have to monitor you and I was like oh why they said basically if your levels don't go down you you might have to have chemo you might have to have you might get cancer you might have to yeah deal with all that when I'm trying to get on and grieve so basically my grieving had like halted again and I'd gone numb again I think molar, molar cancer as they say troboluscic whatever it is, is is really curable which is great and I'm so happy and glad that it is it took me my numbers a while to go down it went very slowly and it was really scary because obviously I didn't want to have the chemo, I didn't want to have anything to do with that. I didn't want to end up having like a hysterectomy and not be able to have any more children. And um, yeah, it's, it's a really curable one, which anyone that's been told they have cancer is really thankful that they know it's going to be curable. I think if any other time I'd got diagnosed with a tumour or too much for possibly cancerous or that is cancer you have to have chemo I think I could have handled it but it was a weekly and two weekly reminder of what I'd gone through half the doctors and nurses that were taking my blood didn't even know what it was so I'd have to explain to them and have to go into it again and I had to relive the pain and it was like a stab in my heart every time I went to have a blood test I didn't even like needles as it was so having that after you lose a child you can't mentally it's a lot to take in and um yeah so my numbers went down eventually after i think three or four months at one point it did halt and if it's halts for a f i think it was like three or four weeks and then they said oh this continues to do this for another few weeks and we'll have to take you know more action as in chemo and things and that was you know scary and then luckily I didn't have to and it it was fine as she said it went down my hormones went down and I was lucky as a lot of women who have cancer or this don't are not as lucky enough to have six months of chemotherapy have to have a hysterectomy lose the hair lose the eyebrows lose the health everything the only thing is now, every time I get pregnant or if I have any future miscarriages, I have to be monitored afterwards because of the risk of them, the cells coming back and the risk of the troprobastic disease again and the cancer risk again and the monitoring again, which is not great, obviously. But obviously, when you want to have children, that's the risk you take. And I'll take it as it comes, if it does come, and hopefully I'll be lucky again. And like it's a it's a really curable one. I'd rather have this. I'd rather have had the abnormal cells, not the pregnancy. I would not rather have had a miscarriage. I'd rather have had a really easy cancer than say a one that's gonna kill you. You know, I just wouldn't. It's hard to deal with at the time when you're going through all this. I just wanted to raise awareness on it and to say my story before I move on to well go forward in my new chapters it's always been affected it's always going to be affected by my previous pregnancies I had also had an, an early miscarriage before this one before my molar so that's affected it as well but I wanted it to be included and it's not just forgotten about our baby we had I felt, we both felt like it was a boy, and we even named him Leo, and 
Leo will never be forgotten about. Never. That's another reason I want to do this YouTube video. So it's not like he's just gone. See, I'm so blessed to be healthy, what I know now, what physically, and to have had the better version of a molar, as you say. And I hope my journey doesn't get more difficult. But I hope this raises awareness and you look out for the signs and things of a molar and it, or it helps you through it if you're going through it. That you can, there is positive at the end of all this shit. <laughs> right, well, thank you for watching this video. I hope it was informative. Subscribe, like, comment. I'll see you for my next one.